Last year, I released an article on how we do keyword research and automate part of the process. I also gave away a free Google spreadsheet so you could do it yourself. This quickly became our most popular piece of content that was released in 2018, and it's continued to be our most popular piece of content through 2019. Since the post came out, changes have been made to the internal version of the spreadsheet, and I finally got around to updating the public version as well. This video is going to go over how to use the latest version of the spreadsheet, and if you want to grab a copy of it, then click the link in the description below. If you haven't already, you can download the spreadsheet we're going to be using by going to teambluedog.com slash keyword research or by clicking on the link in the description below. The way that this sheet works is that we're going to be finding who our competitors are, and then we're going to be finding what keywords that our competitors currently rank for, and we're going to sort through those keywords and decide what we want to target ourselves. By doing keyword research this way, we can spy on what's already working for competitors, what's already driving them customers, clients, and revenue. In order to use our sheet, you're going to need an Ahrefs account. If you don't already have an Ahrefs account, you can get a 7-day, seven $7 trial. This video is neither sponsored by them, and I don't have an affiliate link. If you want to return to this video, then you can use the link at the top of this spreadsheet, or you can refer back to the blog post. The first thing we need to do is figure out who our search competitors are, or who our competitors are, according to Google. To do this, we're going to add our primary term or our vanity keyword into Google. In this case, I typed in Boston Roofer. Now, you probably have more than one vanity keyword, but for the sake of example, I'm only going to do one. So once we've typed in our vanity keyword, we now need to find our top five to 10 competitors. If you wanted to, you could find a lot more, but again, at some point, there's going to be a diminishing return. So I'm going to open up the competitors that are not directories. So no Yelp, no Angie's List, no Home Advisor, no Gaff.com. I want to open up actual roofing companies. So in this case, I just opened the top five competitors. And if your website is already coming up, then open up your website as well. Now we're going to repeat this process for each of our vanity keywords. So once you're done with Boston Roofing, you can put in Boston Roofing Repair, Boston Metal Roofing, so on and so forth. Once you have all the pages open, you want to copy the URLs into a text document. Now you could just open up each individual tab and paste it into a text document, but if you have 40, 50 tabs over, that's going to take a while. So what you can do is use this plugin called tab copy. And if you don't see URL in the bottom here, then you want to go into the settings for the Chrome extension and make sure that URL is one of your formats. So with URL selected, you can copy all the tabs in the current window. And then you can open up your text document and paste. Since I have a couple extra URLs open, such as this Google search, a Google document, and our blog post, I'm just going to get rid of these terms, and now I just have all the competitors that I had open. Now, if you searched for a bunch of different terms, then you may have some duplicate URLs in here, and we don't want to have any duplicates. So to get rid of the duplicates, we can come to textfixer.com slash tool slash remove duplicate lines, and we can just paste in all of the URLs that we have, and we can click remove duplicate lines. And then we can recopy the parsed list. But in this case, there are only five URLs. None of them were duplicate, so it didn't remove anything. But if we did have a duplicate here, it did not add the extra duplicate down below. Now that we have all of our non-duplicated URLs, we can go back into the template and go to the Add Competitor Sheet. Under the Competitor Page column, we can paste in all of our URLs. And this will add a link to hrefs in the second column. So now we just want to open up each of these links. On hrefs, this will automatically put us into URL mode for the page with HTTP, HTTPS, and looking for the top keywords that are ranking between 1 and 50. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to export all of the keywords that the competitor is ranking for by clicking this export button. And if there are less than 1,000 keywords, we can just use a quick export. If there are more than 1,000, then we're going to need to do a full export. And if we do have to do a full export, you can find the export by clicking on this button in the top right. But in this case, I'm just going to do a quick export. And we're going to repeat this process for every competitor URL that we have. Once we've downloaded all of our CSV files, then we can come to filesmerge.com slash merge dash CSV dash files. And this will allow us to merge all of our CSV files into one file so that we only have to import one file back into the Google Sheet rather than a bunch of different files. So we're just going to move all of our CSVs over here. We're going to make sure that remove duplicate rows is set to no. 
and then we're gonna click merge. Now I've already exceeded my daily limit, which is fine, but it'll still work for you. So with our merge CSV file, we're now going to go back into the spreadsheet and go to the import sheet. With cell A1 selected, we're gonna go file, import, upload, and then we're going to drag in our merged file. Then we're gonna replace data at selected cell. And now we have all of our competitors keywords added to one sheet. So now if we go on the research sheet, what this has done is this has imported all of the key, all the unique keywords. So it's automatically parsed out all the duplicates that we found of our competitors. And it's also imported what the search volume is for that individual term. Our next step is to go through these keywords. In this case, we have 81 and determine which ones we do or do not want to target. And we would indicate that on the target column here by changing this to either yes or no. So you would go down this list and you can use the keyword column for filters to make this a little bit easier. So for example, we have a Lynn right here. That's a brand name and chances are you're not going to rank for your competitor's brand name. So I'm just going to use a filter here for text contains the competitor's name. In this case, only one pulled up and right away I'm going to choose no just change this to LYN. And now I see a bunch of other variations of their name. So now I can just say no to all of these. So for the sake of simplicity, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say yes to a couple of these. And then I'm going to say no to everything else. So once we've gone through all of our terms, what we want to do is make sure we're only looking at the target yes. So this filter is just set to remove blanks. And this filter is set to only show me the keywords that I determined that I do want to target. Our next step is to map these keywords to our money pages. Or what page do we want to rank for this keyword? And again, I'm just going to put examples in here. So let's say for these three keywords, we wanted to target the home page. For this keyword, we wanted to target the repair page. And you can put whatever you want in this target page here for now. And let's say this page right here, we want to target with the home page, and this was for our metal version page. So once all of our target pages have been selected, we then need to make a duplicate of this sheet right here for each target page. And we need to make sure that the name of the sheet matches exactly what's in here. So in this case, we have three, home page, metal, and repair. So I'm gonna make sure that this says repair. I'm gonna make a duplicate of this. I'm gonna make sure that this says metal. What this is going to do is with these sheets, it's going to import everything from the research sheet that has the target page, the same name as the sheet name. So in this case, the sheet name is homepage. So it's gonna check the research page, check to see what target page is set to homepage, and it's gonna pull in just those keywords. And this is gonna give us a page by page view of our keywords and our targeting. And we have a couple of different columns on this page. So what we see here are the keywords that we selected, their search volume again, and we also see their click value. The click value is the cost per click for Google Ads times the search volume. And that's how the click value is calculated. I'll explain why we want to know the click value and how we can use that to judge the value of a keyword in a minute here. Next, I've also pulled in the KD or keyword difficulty according to Ahrefs. If you want to learn more about keyword difficulty, then I would recommend checking out Ahrefs' blog in which they explain how they calculate this metric and what it means. Finally, we have this ranking pages column. Now, the equation for this is only in the first cell, and I recommend, unless you're actually using this column, to keep it in like that because this is just going to make the sheet ridiculously long. But what this column does is it shows us, based on the competitors that we pulled, which pages of the competitors are ranking for this. So if we pulled in 40 or 50 different competitors and all their different keywords, well, maybe for one individual keyword, only one or two of the competitors are actually ranking for it. We'll be able to see not only which competitors are ranking for that term, but also which pages are there are ranking for it. So in this case, we decided that we wanted to rank our homepage for these terms. And for this term individually, and we can see here that all of the competitors that we pulled their home pages are also ranking for it. And if we wanted to, we could drag this down to see, okay, well, these three competitors are ranking for this term. 
these two comparators were the ones ranking for this term, and so forth. We can also just copy and paste into a specific cell if we just want to see for one keyword. But as you can see, it just makes the entire spreadsheet pretty wide and it makes it a little bit difficult to read. So I recommend just having it in this one cell until you're ready to actually use it. Now, something you'll notice is in the ones that we just created the repair in the metal, the keywords haven't pulled through yet. And this is because we changed the name of the sheet. It used to be copy of homepage, and now we changed it to repair. And it takes a second for the system to realize the name has changed. So you can force it to recognize the change by going to cell A2, copying the cell, deleting the cell, and pasting it again. For whatever reason, this seems to force the system to recognize the update. And now we can see all the same information just broken down for the repair page. So once you're done with mapping your keywords, you can look at the stats sheet and a bunch of stuff has already been filled in here. So over here we have the total imported terms. This is how many terms were imported into the import sheet. Then we have the total selected terms. So out of all the imported terms, how many did we determine yes that we want to target on the research sheet? Of the terms we determined that we wanted to target, what is the estimated total monthly search volume of all those keywords? In this case, 190. Over here is a section that you're going to have to edit yourself. What is the estimated click-through rate from search term to the website? Or what percentage of people are going to click on your Google ranking? So if you're not familiar with CTR and the average CTR by metric, I would keep it at just the default 5%. The fewer keywords you're targeting, the higher your click-through rate is going to be. And the more keywords you're targeting, the lower your click-through rate is going to be. Next is the estimated website's conversion rate. Based on the terms that we pulled in, which are all middle of the funnel or buyer intent terms, people that are looking for your services, in this case, a roofing contractor, what percentage of those people who are currently looking for a roofing company that then land on this roofing website are going to convert into a lead? Now, if you're already tracking your conversion rate on your website, you can put in your conversion rate here, but if not, it's just set to a default 20% or one in five people who are looking for your services that land on your website will become a lead. Next is your lead value or how much is each individual lead worth to your business. If you don't know what your lead value is, then there are a ton of calculators online that you can use to figure out what your lead value is. For this example, I'm gonna say that this roofing company's lead value is $300. And what this does is this all fills out this part of the stat sheet. So estimated monthly traffic is the total estimated search volume times the click-through rate. Estimated monthly leads is the traffic times the estimated website conversion rate. And the monthly value is the monthly leads times the lead value. Now, hopefully when you do this yourself, you're gonna see much higher numbers than this, but I only selected a couple terms and didn't go very deep with the keyword research. Now, what we also have here is the total keyword value, which is a very interesting stat. Now, what this says is based on what it would cost for each individual click on Google AdWords, times the monthly search volume for all of our selected keywords. Or in other words, if you were to buy every single click on Google at the rate that Google Ads is currently charging for it, for these keywords that you selected, it would cost this amount of money. The reason why this is in here is to show a different way of showing the value of these keywords. This is because lead value is an estimate, but presumably the people who are bidding on these keywords through Google Ads are continuing to bid on these keywords and are bidding as much as they are on these keywords because it is profitable for them to do so. So this tells us that based on these seven keywords, there is at least $2,140 a month worth of leads that could come from this keyword. The last sheet on here is the SERP feature sheet. So what this does is this pulls in all of the keywords that we selected as well as their search volume again, but this time it also pulls in their SERP features or what extra things are going on on the search engine results, such as is there a featured snippet? Is there an image pack? Are there site links? Is there an image thumbnail? Is there a knowledge panel? So on and so forth. So this column right here shows us all the different SERP features that are showing up for this term that Ahrefs found. And then this section will mark an X for the keyword if it did have that SERP feature. What this does is it allows us to better optimize for the actual search engine results page. So if we know what keywords are currently showing videos 
then we know that if we were to release a video, we could target this keyword and Google has already told us that it's willing to rank a video for that search term. If there's a featured snippet, then we know we can go after that featured snippet as well. So this is how to use our keyword research automation document. If you have any questions, you can email me at jared at teambluedog.com.